Hi, so uh, my name's Steve. I'm actually Matt's brother. Um, but I work at the university here uh, in the geography department and uh, I, I teach about glaciology and do research on the ice sheets and mountain glaciers. So it's a great job. I get to travel around the world, go to some amazing places and talk about glaciers and, and ice. So over to you, Neil. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Neil. I work at the Met Office. So I'm an atmospheric physicist by trade. Um, I'm, my main qualification for being in the band is that I'm a drummer, <laughs> rather than a sea level rise guy. My job at the Met Office is about finding new ways that we can make our data more useful to people, so people can actually start making decisions, um, yeah, the, the right ones. Hi everyone, I'm close to the speaker. I'm Joe. Um, I'm uh, also like Matt, I work at the Met Office and at the University of Bristol. Um, so my role, I really see myself as an applied climate scientist. So I work, um, in fact I used to work in the, the same team as Rosie, working with people around the world, uh, particularly in Africa and Asia, um, uh, on projects to try and inform climate solutions, and we work particularly in this area we call climate services, which is trying to provide information in a way that's useful for policy, for decision making, um, and in the band I play bass and uh, I'm on backing vocals. That's a strange way for an introduction to end as a climate scientist, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks everyone. And yeah, I realised I didn't introduce myself, so my name is Rosie Oaks. I also work with the Met Office, you're seeing the team here. Um, and my job is to make sure that uh, people in government have the right science information they need to help them make decisions. So I work with the scientists at the Met Office, but also with policymakers in government to try and make sure they have what they need, the answers to the questions that they have. Um, so I'm going to ask a few questions to the band, but if you have some questions, we'll put um, a slide up so you can ask them online, and then I can ask them. Ask, we can ask them for you. Oh, it's set up an alarm, so. Um, so let's just start. Maybe Matt will come to you. Why did you decide to write a song about sea level rise? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I uh, I guess I, I I guess I was a musician. I've been a musician longer than I've been a scientist. So. Uh, I guess um, I, I, you know, I've always written songs, and um, I don't remember it being uh, too conscious about it. I think um, just some some kind of lyrics popped into my head one day when I was strumming my guitar, and I just turned it into something, and I realised actually it could be quite a cool vehicle for like a video. So the video that we just seen, uh, we worked with a filmmaker called Tim Lowe, and that was a really fun project actually as well. So just one of those things that I mixing uh, work with. With music, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, thank, thanks for that. And I, I think we, we see this kind of as we work both in the UK and around the world. People connect with climate information differently. So, as climate scientists, sometimes we just sit and read very long technical papers. But actually, when we're talking to people around the world, sometimes it's easier to communicate through song or through maybe a game or a poster. It's a different way of getting the same message across. So, I don't know, Joe, if you want to talk about some of the work you've done internationally using different methods, not necessarily song, but some of the other things you've done in your work. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, um, you know, when we're talking about issues around weather and climate, sometimes, as you, as you say, that can be quite a dry topic when we're talking about facts and figures, but people really resonate with the experience of, of living with weather and climate, and we all, you know, it's been one of the warmest weeks that I can remember in September here, and so we all feel it, and, and people around the world that we work with experience climate in different ways and for us to be able to provide information in a way that resonates and is useful for people um, we need to find those ways that people can, can engage and so we've we've done all sorts of things from improvised theatre to um, to storytelling, uh, sort of immersive workshops that are not just with um, um, uh, communities but also with politi polit politicians, uh, governments, business leaders um, to try and get people talking. I think that the key thing as well is that everyone brings knowledge. It's not a case of climate scientists have knowledge and information and they, you're communicating one way. It's, uh, whenever I've engaged with people around these subjects, I, I learn as much as, any, as anyone in these engagements. And so I think that's, that's a really key part of it. Thanks, Joe. And Neil, I know your job is all about sharing data so that people can access the numbers they need. Can you tell us a bit more about what you do and why you think that's important? Yeah, I mean, just thinking about what, what Joe was saying there, you know, maybe this is sort of like myth of his heresy, but nobody actually cares about the weather or the climate. What they care about is what impact it has, right? You know, so looking at the weather forecast tomorrow, you're trying to decide whether you're going to take your umbrella with you or not, right? You're not just interested in whether it's sunny. 
And so really, like you say, Joe, it's about combining what we've got with what everybody else has, you know, their context to the decisions that they're they're trying to make. <laughs> Is that not another alarm is going on? Are you panicking about <laughs> I mean, part, part of the challenge, uh, well, one of the things I'm really interested in in my work is that this data is just actually really difficult to use. You know, like, um, you can distill it down to something like surface temperature, you know, is the metric that everybody thinks about. But actually, that starts off as a huge, like an unimaginably huge volume of data uh, that's in the building at the Met Office. And really turning that into something that decision makers can, can use uh, is, is no mean feat. You know, there's actually some really cutting edge technology that goes into doing that, some really cutting edge data science. Um, and that's before you even get to understanding what the numbers mean and then what they mean to you. You know, so there's a, there's a serious task here. So, um, yeah, that's a big part of, uh, of why I go to work. Yeah. Thanks, Neil. Um, do we need to panic about this alarm? Yes. You're okay. We're okay. No, it's all okay. Really it's a test. Okay. It's, it's, it's worked. <laughs> the test works and we're, nothing bad is happening. Oh, there we go. Great. <laughs> and then Steve, you said you work a lot with students at the university. So what kind of questions are students asking who are coming to the university? What do they want to know about climate change and maybe see them arise as well? Yeah, I mean, uh, so I, I'm, I teach in the geography department and um, you know, geography is a discipline where we, we, we get students from all sorts of backgrounds, we've done all sorts of um, previous qualifications and, and so yeah we get a really diverse kind of intake of people who some of them know more about climate change already and some of them know less so um, I mean one of the things that I feel like we're kind of battling about against it sometimes is some of the kind of disinformation about climate change that, that is out there in, in social media and in other, in other in other formats, you know, there are kind of, you know, without wanting to go too conspiracy theory on this, you know, there are um, agencies in, in, in the world that are trying to preserve the status quo and trying to kind of sow disinformation and doubt about climate science. And so a lot of what we teach about is, is, is going to the kind of the, what we consider the, the sort of the Bible of climate science, which is the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which we have a, well, a couple of co-authors in, in Exeter, don't we? We have a few, Matt, Matt was uh, involved in producing that report and we have other people at the University and the Met Office who are involved in that. And that was recently, um, yeah, they recently had a sixth assessment report and, um, and it's really such a useful resource to be using the teaching of, of climate change science to students. So, yeah, I have to say I, I, I refer to that a lot and, um, and that tends to answer a lot of the questions the students have. Um, yeah, so sometimes it's about finding, a bit like what other people said, finding a kind of engaging way to, 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 to teach that. Um, it's not always, uh, you know, not everyone wants to read the you know, textbook chapter or a chapter of the IPCC report. Uh, as good as the figures are. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's finding, it's finding engaging ways for a, a diverse group of learners to engage with that.